Good evening, good evening. We're so grateful and we're thankful for each and every one of you joining in on today as we open up this Bible study in terms of manna for living, manna free living. And we're thankful for you and your families joining in with us. I have Sister Brenda Davis that is with us as well. And she is going to be our co-facilitator on tonight. I'm Pastor Anthony Williams, and we're just so grateful for each and every one of you that are joining in in your respective places. We had some technical difficulty. Hopefully, we have uh, uh, overcome those things, and you are able to see and hear us on Facebook Live. Well, we're going to open up in prayer, and then I will share the screen, and we will get into our lesson on tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity that you have given unto us to lift up your holy and your righteous name. We thank you for everyone that is joining in tonight. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak volumes to all of us as we learn how to better manage our finances, as we learn how to better uh, lead as, as our families and our households and be good stewards over the resources that you give unto us. Lord, we pray that this broadcast will be a blessing to all of those that are tuning in from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west. And we give your name the glory, honor, and praise <clears throat> for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. I'm going to share my screen at this time. Bear with me on that. All right, Sister Brenda, can you see the screen? Yes, I see the screen. We're all set. Great, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, Man of Free Living, we are in Unit 3 and Unit 4 on tonight. Uh, the book is uh, a powerful book written by R. Carnell Jones. And so, we pray that each and every one of you will invest in this book. We have been teaching out of this book for the last few weeks, and it has been truly, truly an empowerment to each and every one that has joined in on this call. We also have people joining in by way of our prayer line here at Love Fellowship Church, so we have different ways for you to connect on tonight, Facebook Live, as we are on Zoom and on our prayer line. So we're thankful and we're grateful for you and your families joining in. We would like for you to share the broadcast with others, like and share if you're on Facebook Live. If you're on our prayer line, share the information, share the number so that others also can be a part of this dynamic teaching as we teach on manna free living. Well, let's get into the lesson in the PowerPoint tonight, uh, then the manna ceased, Sister Brenda, then the manna ceased. So why don't you start off by sharing a little bit about unit three. Unit three is gonna talk about when, you know, they was in the wilderness and how God provided them uh, with manna for their food and everything. And so, and, and we'll go through all that and then how he was trying to, you know, taking them to the promised land and how, he was moving us away from the manna to take us in the promised land and, you know, for greater fruit and everything. And so it's talking about how the manna started, how it ceased and going into the promised land. That's kind of the trail of this particular study is in unit three. So if you look at why manna then and not now, elaborate a little bit on that. Well, Back then, uh, when we was why the manna, manna fell from the sky every night. And, and as things, they scooped it up in the morning that God provided for his people and fed them for 40 years. Because you know what they was wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. It really shouldn't have taken them nowhere that long. Right, exactly. But due to their disobedience, uh, grumbling and complaining, it took them 40 years to reach the, the promised land. And he 
And in that scripture there, it said why, and it tells you in um, that verse 16, Exodus 16, um, verse 7 and 12, um, it states that, I thought it was in it. Let me pull that up and I'll read that. So Exodus 16 and 7. It says in number seven, and the angels of the Lord found her, found her by a fountain of water in, oh, I'm in the wrong one. Sorry, guys. All right, Holy Spirit, get me where I was supposed to be. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> it says on Exodus 16, verse seven, and in the morning, then he shall see the glory of the Lord for he that heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against? And then in verse 12, it states, and I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them saying that even ye shall eat flesh and in the mornings ye shall be filled with bread and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. So he was providing them that then, but that's not where he intended for them to go. It was for them because they was hungry. However, Exodus shared another side of the story. God was tired. He, in, the, in gratitude of the Israelites, he provided uh, manna to stop their grumbling as they did not believe that they would survive in the wilderness under the leadership of Moses. But as we know, it wasn't a matter of fact of the leadership of Moses. It was about all their murmuring and complaining not trusting and believing in God, knowing that, you know, he had brought them out of Egypt, but it's still like he had to continue to prove himself. And so um, not now, because now we have Jesus Christ. So he brought other things, provided us other ways that yes. we don't have to do that. That's right. And so the children of Israel, they had these temper tantrums. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they wanted God to, 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 to just do what they wanted God to do. Exactly. And God, amen, tried to get them beyond their temper tantrums. But as Exodus said, you know, he provided the manna so that they could really just calm down and chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. So the manna is food, right? It's like yes. a cake or bread yes. that literally fell from heaven. That's right. And it was their way of being fed because they thought that they would perish or die in the wilderness. They had no trust in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as we look at the next slide, it's interesting um, that there's three places that the children of Israel were eating in. And the question is, where do you want to eat? <laughs> do you want to eat in place number one, which was Egypt? Place number two, the wilderness. Place number three, the promised land. So Brenda, why don't you share a little bit about place one and two, and I'll share about place three. Well, it states that in place one, it was the Egypt, represent the unsaved world of sin and bondage. One, it was a variety of the food was limited, but plenty to eat. The people were slaves. And then in number two, the wilderness represent coming out of sin and following God become disobedience when it became but they became disobedience when it becomes rough uh, when everything didn't fall in their places they started that grumbling and complaining but when you look at place number three the promised land which represents walking in obedience and faith in god the food was the best god had to offer in quality and quantity and variety and that's the place that we all need to arrive at. Amen. Yes. As we've been yes. teaching at Love Fellowship Church 2022, we believe in God to reposition ourselves for greater. God was steadily trying to reposition them out of that Egypt mindset, that mentality of, of the world and that mentality of sin and struggle and bondage and reposition them to the promised land. Mm -hmm. But they had to go through the wilderness because of their disobedience. 
And because of their disobedience, it delayed place number three manifesting yes. in their life. Sometimes That's we right. can delay uh, mm -hmm. what God has already prepared for us because yes. we refuse to be repositioned for the mm -hmm. greater that he's already prepared. Wow. So it's important that we don't delay because of disobedience. We don't delay the promise. We don't delay it by years or months or weeks, but we want to make sure that the promise that God has made to us or the promises God has made to us, that it's not that it becomes fulfilled because of our obedience to what God says. Mm -hmm. So manna, 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 manna was not, amen, the issue. The issue right. was obedience. <laughs> right. Manna right. was not the issue. The issue was faith. And it's never material things. I mean, if you say, well, I need my light bill paid. Well, your light bill is not really the issue. The issue is how have you been managing your money that mm -hmm. you don't have enough for the light bill? The issue is always bigger than what you can see in the natural. Right. Yes. And we just have to be mindful when we are murmuring and complaining, we're hindering, we're saying we don't trust God. It's like we forget what he's already done. And that murmuring and complaining, it doesn't solve anything. It hinders because you stay in that mode of despair versus opening yourself up and allowing God to minister to you by reaching out to the Lord. But we go and complain to ourselves, our friends, and so on and so on. Let me read this excerpt out of the book on page 43. And this is in unit three. Mm -hmm. It says in the in the middle chap, middle paragraph, rather, it says, the children of Israel were miraculously blessed in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. It was a miracle that their shoes and clothes did not wear out. It was a Amen. miracle that God gave water from a rock or rocks so the water did not run out. It was a miracle that God provided manna and their food did not run out. All mm -hmm. of these miracles God provided. Mm -hmm. What they didn't understand, watch this, what the children of Israel didn't understand was that their lives were running out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their lives were going nowhere but in circles. Wow. See, they had miracles, but they were still going in circles. My God. Right. right. They had miracles. God was... God, they had food on the table, but they still weren't going anywhere. That's true. That's true. Think about that for a moment. Would it, would it be better, wow, to have clear direction from God or just have God, amen, just give you something because you asked for it? I would rather have clear direction from God than so that I will be going in the direction that God wants me to go in than just to have food on my table mm -hmm. and not go anywhere. Wow. Exactly. It says their lives were going nowhere, but in circles. It was mm -hmm. the same frustrating scenario every day. They were dying for miracles and they were dying, dying with miracles. Wow. Miracles. So in other words, <laughs> yeah. they wanted miracles and God gave them miracles and they still weren't going anywhere. Right. When they got the miracles, they weren't going anywhere. And it was all because of their disobedience. The miracles weren't the, the issue. The money to pay the light bill is not the issue. The money to pay the car payment is not the issue. The money to pay the rent or the mortgage is not the issue. If God let a million dollars fall out of the sky, and you haven't changed your heart and your mindset, right. then it That's doesn't right. matter. You still be right. broke at the end of the million. <laughs> That's right. That's right. How many times we have seen people hit the lottery and read about these things where in five years they're, they're bankrupt or they're broke mm -hmm. because the money, the resource is not the issue. That's right. They had a problem connecting with the source. That's why they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. It that's says right. this in that latter par paragraph, that's not the life that we want. If, if we therefore have the manna mentality in which we murmur and idly wait for God for another miracle, 
then that must cease. We have to walk by faith and obedience in order to get the wilderness, get out of the wilderness rather, and into the promised land. We cannot afford to have a manna mentality. We cannot afford to have wilderness experiences in this pandemic. That's right. We're already in a pandemic from a world perspective. So why do you want a wilderness perspective in your own house? This teaching tonight is all about the manna must cease. That's Amen. right. Just waiting on a handout or a quick fix. That's what manna really was, if you put it in a natural translation. <clears throat> a quick fix, these things must cease. Just getting somebody to pay your bill or your light bill or your water bill or your gas bill or your car payment, and then the next month you still broke, that must cease. That's right. That's right. You it, have to have a bigger plan than that. Yes. In order to grow and to be repositioned for greater. That's right. That's right. Next slide. Okay. What could be better than a miracle? Elaborate a little bit on that, Brenda. It states on the in the bullet points after the Israelites ate the food from the promised from the promised land, manna ceased. Not symbolic of the ending of miracles, but an era where God people, God's people exercised their faith and saw miraculous things happen. And that's what we have to do. When we put God as the source, miraculous things will happen, but it's not going to be like a quick fix as we were talking about like the manna. We have to go through the process and we will see that uh, everything starts to manifest. And it says that the children of Israel learned we can we if we learn lessons we can learn regularly walking in faith and obedience bringing far greater blessings than daily miracles of manna. There is no personal relationship between the Israelites and God. We have to read that again. There was no personal relationship between Israelites and God. If God is not internal, we will always look for Him externally. When wow. you always look for Him externally you will have to see the manna. That means you have to see it. You can't walk by faith, by not by sight. You have to see it. Before you make a move, or before you make some adjustment, you feel like you have to see. It's like, God, I just need to see. But he said, bless it to those who don't see. You know, So we have to make sure that we allow faith to take over instead of the fear of always having to see. That's uh, so good. That's so mm -hmm. good. It says on page 44, regularly walking in faith and obedience brings far greater blessings than the daily miracle of manna. Yes. <laughs> there is no personal relationship between the Israelites and God. That was their mm -hmm. biggest problem. That's they right. They had no real connection to the source. They had no real connection to their creator, Father God. If you mm -hmm. don't have God internally, watch this, that's you will right. always have to look for him external. Wow. That's right. And that's what we stated there. Mm -hmm. If you don't, I need to say this one more time. If you don't have God internally, you will always have to look for him externally. In other words, you're always looking for the quick fix. That's right. You're always looking for a way to pay this bill or that bill. And you're constantly robbing Peter to pay Paul. But when you have a relation, relationship with God and his son, Jesus Christ, internally, and you truly are seeking direction from the source, then he'll give you a plan that's bigger than the bill that you face at the end of the month. Because of this lack of personal relationship, either staying in the wilderness or returning to Egypt were both seen as better options to the Israelites than going into the promised land. Wow. My, my. Mm. They would rather turn back than be repositioned for greater. Huh. How many of you listening today have that manna mentality? This is the manna mentality that we're talking about right now. The manna mentality means that you only see 
what you need. Right. <laughs> you can't That's see right. beyond what you need. That's right. God did not create you to only live one day to the next. That's right. God created us with vision, dreams, and promises to be fulfilled in our lives. And when you have a man of mentality, yes. when things get <laughs> rough and you don't see the immediate response of God, you're ready to cut and run and go back to Egypt. Go back to bondage. Go back into the world system. That's right. And that's not the way to arrive at the promised land. Mm -hmm. I believe truly God wants us to be repositioned for the promised land. That's Watch right. This. this is this is this is this is so powerful. God works greatly. I'm reading on page 44 mm -hmm. of Unit mm -hmm. 3. God works greatly through us when he dwells richly in us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God will work greatly through you when he dwells richly in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What could be better than a miracle? A miracle in which God works through us to bring it to pass. <laughs> when I read that, I was so excited because God gave me a revelation several weeks ago, many months ago. It's not what happens to you, but what happens through you that matters That's the most. That's right. That's, That's exactly right. what the author is talking about here. That's right. The children of Israel missed that. They were more concerned on what was happening to them. The fact that they were in the wilderness, the fact that they didn't, they didn't know, amen, how long it was going to take them to get to the promised land. And so because of what was happening to them, they allowed their mindset to shift from a mindset of faith and trusting and obedience in God to a mindset of murmuring and complaining and forgetting the miracles that God had already performed. Even the manna was not enough because they were too focused on what was happening to them instead of what God was trying to do through them. God was trying to show them something greater than what yes. they could see with their natural eyes, but they were still trying to look through the lens of their natural thinking instead of looking through the lens of faith. The Bible says this, that, that the eyes of our understanding should be enlightened. And if your eyes are only fixed on the natural, how can God ever enlighten you to the supernatural realm? Mm -hmm. And so God works greatly through us when he works through, it says this, God works greatly through us when he dwells richly in us. Understand that. God works greater through you when he derails richly in you, build up your relationship with God and his son, Jesus Christ, and watch how God will move in your mm -hmm. finances and in every area of your life. Amen. So miracles versus works, miracles versus works. Why don't you explain what that means, Brenda? The miracles versus works. The very first thing it says, uh, if given the choice of miracles falling from the sky and having to work, we probably would choose miracles because we want that quick fix. We want, we want to see it right now. We don't want to put in the work, whether that's with money, with our relationships, with our spouses, with our extended family, whatever the case may be in our ministry, we want the miracles. We want to come on and, and stay on that high, but there are going to be sometimes you're going to have to be in the valley. And, it, and God is going to see how we're going to respond in the valley. Are we going to be the ones that's murmuring and complaining? Or are we going to walk by faith knowing that he's going to bring us through? You know, he's going to bring us through it, but we got to be obedient. And it says, Jesus used the word works more than miracles to describe what he did. Only used miracles twice in the Bible. And both times it referred to the man's viewpoint. And he said, if we can embrace the spirit of God within us, the works that we do will look miraculous to others. Because if we're, we're working out of through him, he's guiding us, he's directing us. We're not working out of self. We're working out of the supernatural as God is leading us. So to pe other people around us, we, it's going to look miraculous of things that's what's happening in us and through us. And that will give us a chance to be a witness. The eyes off on us and be able to say, well, you know, let's sit down and I can tell you where, you know, it's not about me. 
It's what's God doing through me. Um, and he has here on a Luke 10, 17 to 20. There is where Jesus told the disciples they should get excited about their names being written in heaven versus about having the ability to cast out demons. Because we get excited about that. But at the end of the day, are you, are you headed into the kingdom of God? You know, because you can do that, but then where is your heart at? He's still looking at our heart and stuff. So God is trying to get us from Egypt through the wilderness into the promised land. The manner cease. If we are to Amen. rise to the promised land, we must show God the work we can do by walking in obedience. And that's what Amen. we've got tonight is walking in obedience. This is so true. Mm -hmm. If you have questions, put them in the chat box. If you're on Facebook Live, let us know what those questions are. We certainly want to be able to answer any questions that you might have. Um, so we give you this opportunity as we're kind of midway through the teaching tonight. If you have any questions about pertaining to the book, uh, anything that we can answer tonight, we want to spend the last 10 minutes of this teaching and give you opportunity to answer, answer any questions that you may have. So please put that in the chat box. We would love to address any questions that you have, but this is good. Miracles versus works. Yes. The Bible tells us that we ought to work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Faith without works is dead, being alone. So we understand that the Bible is clear, amen, that there's a part that God plays and there's a part that we play. Guess what? The children of Israel would have never made it into the promised land if they had not put one foot in front of the other. <laughs> in mm. other words, they couldn't just lie down and go to sleep and automatically uh, the angels were going to lift them up and take them to the promised land. Now, yeah, there are certain miraculous things that have happened in the Bible with Enoch and Elijah and certain other mighty men of God, where God uh, uh, took them from one place to another by way of the spirit. But I will tell you this, amen, you got to have a plan when it comes to your finances. You can't rely on miracles only. That's right. It can't be a miracle every time your bills are due. Uh, at some point, you have to have a mindset shift to say, God, get me out of this manner mentality of yes. waiting on a handout or a miracle when it comes to my finances. Let show me a plan that I can put to work so that my finances will work properly. This is what we're talking about tonight. The manner mentality must cease. And so when we look at Deuteronomy 8, 3, 8 and 3, it reads, he humbled you, causing you to hunger mm -hmm. and feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Wow. Amen. Why, why, why did God use manna? Why did God give them manna? He gave them manna to humble them. The scripture says mm -hmm. he gave them manna so that they will understand that they needed to have a dependency on every word that God was giving unto them. The manna was merely to be a sign. It was not to be a dependency. Exactly. It was never to be a dependency, but they wanted That's to right. be dependent on something falling from the sky instead of trusting God to lead them to the promised land. That's right. Amen. So it also, in that bullet point on the, on the screen, it says God gave the Israelites manna to teach them. Yes. Mm -hmm. He also gave them manna to test them. Mm -hmm. And to humble. after God taught and humbled and tested them, he was still trying to take them somewhere called the promised land. That was the That's place right. that mm -hmm. he was repositioning them. That's right. That's right. Yes. So why did God perform the miracle of man? Why don't you take the first set of bullet points on the slide? 
Why did God perform the miracles of manna? He said, without the miracles of manna from God, not only not allow the, tra the trail of the wilderness, the children of Israel will have entered the promised land with the same mindset they had in Egypt. See, you can't have the same mindset when he's taking you to the promised land. It, we need to be renewing our mind daily so that we can have that new mindset and still being confused between they will be and still be confused of the source and the resource, going wild on the blessings and forgot that it was blessed. They start hoarding and fighting because everybody start looking at what somebody else got, what somebody else is doing, how they're being blessed. And or you wanted to sort of hold in the manner when he didn't intend for them to, that manner was just for that time. They started gathering and trying to store it and everything and then abuse each other and probably develop the same type of oppressive system that they were delivered from and for them to return we return to the struggle class and we talked about the class last week you know and we don't want to go back there when he's trying to lead us to the promised land you can't look back you just cannot look back when you know you need to start getting through that tomb getting through the dsi but avoid from focusing just on me that's so true. And so now we'll transition into unit four. Unit four, God's payment plan. <laughs> mm -hmm. Lay away or 90 days or same as cash. You remember those days? <laughs> <laughs> Lay away or 90 days or same as cash. What is God's payment plan, Brenda? It said the evolution from the layaway payment plan to the various credit plans we have today to a large extent is based on trust. And you know, back then when we would go in and do those layaways, people would trust that we were gonna come back and pay accordingly so we can get all that stuff that we done put back that we wanted, that we didn't have the money then. So we start laying away stuff. And it says, when it comes to receiving material blessings, God can set us up on any kind of plan he wants. He can give us blessings to, uh, to us to free us. He give us blessings to us as a discount or make a layaway, take them away or set them up on installments. So the blessings to free us is our personal relationship with God, easy to expect him to give us everything free of charge or expect God to bless us now that the promise we will pay later or often the estate, the installments we promise are on hold until we can work through a situation. And see, we spend a lot of time working through in situations when we in the tomb, when we're in the struggle class, that's, we spend a lot of time doing that and not, and, and not give us, in the, or he can choose not to give it to us at all. We make promise that once God makes certain situations occur, that's when we talk about, we're gonna start tithing teach Sunday school, or get involved in other ways. We don't trust him and say, I'm going to trust you, Lord, because according to your word, we ought to bring all the tithes to the storehouse. I'm going to trust and believe you by faith that I'm giving my tithes and offering. You're going to take care of everything else, you know, and, and, but we don't, we want to want to do that. We start saying, well, God, if you do this, no, he, he just saying, trust me, you know, and, and as I shared at the beginning, I, I'm, you know, I did that 90 day stuff, uh, the 90 day at my former ministry. That's how, when I started paying tithes, it was a 90 day thing that the Bishop had talked about and I did it. Uh, I trust and believe I forgot all about the bills. I said, I'm going to do this. And that was truly by faith. Amen. It is important that we walk by faith and mm -hmm. not by sight. So when we look at this, I want to share one of the key points on page 55. And it says, don't lose interest. Don't lose interest. And I believe this is one of the biggest challenges with the body of Christ today, that many in the body of Christ have lost interest in the mm -hmm. things of God. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how world events can turn the hearts of minds and people away from God. God's, God's plans, God's purposes, God's visions, 
seem to fall by the wayside and people, so many have lost interest. Mm -hmm. Notice what happened in the days of Haggai. In Haggai chapter number one, Haggai was dealing with a people, the Israelites, that had mm -hmm. lost interest in the things of God. Amen. Notice in verse number one of Haggai one and one, and also verse two, it says, in the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of she Sheotiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. They decided the timing instead of God. And they decided that this is not something that we want to participate and be a part of, which was the building of God's house. That's right. But this is what I would say to that. And I've always been a believer in this thing. And I want you to write it down. <laughs> Please write it down because it has worked for me since 1989. I'm about to share a principle. It's not in this book, but it's pertaining to what we just read here in Haggai 1, 1 and 2. When people lose interest, there's a consequence for that. When you take care of God's kingdom business. That's right. He will take care of your personal business. Mm -hmm. Please write that down. Highlight it, underline it. Put it in your phone, your iPad, your tablet, whatever you got to do. Put it in face, put it on the chat box in Facebook. When you take care of God's kingdom business, he will take care and he is obligated to take care of your personal business. The flip side is also true. When you lose interest in God's kingdom business, then why do you expect God to pay attention to your personal business? Mm -hmm. This was the problem with the Israelites in Haggai the prophet's day. They had lost interest in God's kingdom business. They were only concerned about their own personal business. And whenever people say they love God, get into that place, you're setting yourself up for a great big fall. And that's exactly what the children of Israel did. Notice verse three and four of Haggai one. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Watch this in verse four. Is it time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains ruined. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. One translation says, consider your ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give careful thought to your ways. He says in verse six, you have planned much, but have harvested little. Watch this. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. Mm -hmm. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages, listen to this, only to put them in a purse or a bag with holes in it. <laughs> this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Wow. They were being called out by the prophet because they were so concerned about their personal business that they lost interest in God's kingdom business. And whenever mm -hmm. you get to that type of mindset where the things of God don't matter to you anymore, when the things of God, the kingdom way is not important or priority in your life, you set yourself up. You can go to work all day long and still have not enough to pay your bills. You can do all that you want to do. You can have plans and your plans never come to pass. Why? Because you put the cart before the horse, as the old folks say. You, you, got, you got things in the wrong order. Amen. You are out of position. And that's how it was for the children of Israel. 
They had gotten out of position. They were so far away from God that they said to God and the prophet, oh, it ain't time to rebuild the house of God. It's not time to take care of God's house. But then the prophet had a word from the Lord that said, you take care of your own house, but yet you don't want to consider my house, saith the Lord. Something is wrong with that. He says in verse 6, this is why you harvest little. This is why you eat, but you never have enough. This is why you drink, but you are never filled. This is why you put on clothes, but you are never warm. This is why you earn wages or a paycheck, but it's like you put it in a bag with holes in it. You're That's never right. able to hold on to it to the end of the month or beyond because you're not taking care of God's kingdom business. People of God, we must take care of God's kingdom business and God will be obligated to take care of our personal business. If we don't get the right order on things, if we don't have the right mindset about things, then guess what? We'll continue with the struggle mentality. We'll continue with the manna mentality. We'll continue to never ever arrive at the promised land, the prepared place, the repositioning for greater that God has in store for our lives. Amen. I like what the bullet point said here, Brenda. It says, it says this, God wants us to focus on his agenda. I'm reading off the PowerPoint slide. God wants us to focus on his agenda. He's waiting for us to put our materialistic dreams and goals on layaway. Wow. Hmm. Putting yeah. our dreams, goals, and worldly desires on layaway makes a sizable deposit of our time and resources into the kingdom, we will be richly blessed. In other words, we got to put God first. The mm -hmm. kingdom must come first. Amen. Amen. And everything else falls in line with that. People look at me crazy, Sister Brenda, when I tell them since 1989, I've only been out of work three months. Mm -hmm. Since 1989, you do the math on that. How many years is that? Wow. That's over 30 years yeah. of working, but yet I've only been out of work three months in 30, over 30 years, 89, 99, 2009, 19, 2019 is 30 years. It's 32 years. That's right. How does that happen? Yeah. It ain't luck. Mm -mm. How does that happen? It ain't because I'm so good, but I understood that if I take care of God's kingdom business, he is obligated to take care of my personal business. Mm -hmm. Even when I got laid off, they called me back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I got laid off, but they called me back. This is not something that cannot work for you. This is something that can work for you, but you've got to put priorities first. You got to put Brontus, God in the yes. end of first. That's right. That's right. Come on, Brenda. That's right. And just to sum this up and we can go to the next one, it says that last bullet, the plans he decides to put on us, put us on will depend on his grace, mercy, and purpose for our lives. Our commitment to do his will. So you bring it all the way back to his will. Yeah. Ties yeah. his will. <laughs> mm -hmm. And not the desires of our personal hearts of what we want to do yeah and so we're going to the next slide but that bottom bullet says god wants us to evaluate the quality and priority of our financial decisions so what does that mean to you that are listening today god wants you to evaluate the quality and priority of your financial decisions that means that you ought to be able to take a piece of paper out and write down where your money is going every month. Write down where your money is going every week. How much of what you spend goes into the kingdom of God mm -hmm. versus going into your own personal life? Mm -hmm. Is it 1%? Is it 2%? What is your percentage? Only you can answer that. 
but your money tells a story about what you prioritize in your life. Money has a paper trail. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is look at your bank account, look at your checking statement or go online and look at your uh, banking activity and you will see your paper trail. You will see your priorities right before Mm -hmm. your eyes. The question is, when God begins to show, will you do the exercise? And then when God shows you what you've been prioritizing, if you're out of position, will you allow God to reposition you? Will you allow God to reposition you in your finances? Will you put God first in your spending? Will you put God first in your giving? Will you put God first in your serving? Now, you can be like the children of Israel and keep wandering in the wilderness. <laughs> exactly. And, and what should have took 40 days took 40 years. You can, you can live the rest of your life robbing Peter to pay Paul. You can live the rest of your life. You know, there were people that died and never saw the promised land. There were, they were, they were many that died. Moses died and didn't see the promised land. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and God, the reason why the people died and didn't see the promised land was not because they had heart attacks because of old age. It was because of their hearts were hardened toward mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. They refused the change. They refused to re- be repositioned. They had a mindset of Egypt. They had a mindset of manna. They had a mindset of struggle. And they refuse to re- be repositioned to a mindset of the promised land. Now, this teaching tonight comes to challenge your thinking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What are you going to do? Are you going to follow God's payment plan where you put him first? You prioritize him first in your spending? Or are you going to, amen, put God's plan on layaway, God's kingdom on layaway? Mm-hmm. Where you delay doing mm-hmm. anything for God. That's right. That's right. Now we're talking about finances now, right? That's but it right. goes to, even goes to our service, Services. service, yes. uh, 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 our time, our talents, right. our, it, 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 all of our resources. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is God's agenda going to be put on layaway mm-hmm. so that your agenda can go forward? Mm-hmm. Or will you allow God to reposition you to his payment plan? for your life. I had a conversation with my wife just the other day and I was, we were reflecting and I was sharing with her the reason why we've been so blessed. My Lord. And it's not because Love Fellowship Church pays us a salary because they don't, but it's because we understand what Haggai was talking about. That's right. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you make 20,000 or 100,000. God has a payment plan for you. (laughs) When I was making $17,500 a year, I was tithing. And I was living on my own in my own apartment, making $17,500 a year. And I was tithing. I was making God a priority. When I was making $23,000, $24,000 a year, working at the bank and working at Blockbuster Video, I was tithing. And I was a homeowner at the same time. I promise you, I bought a house making $24,000 a year a two-story home built from the ground up, making $24,000 a year, and I was still tithing. Don't tell me you got to have a lot of money to tithe. You got to have a lot of this. You just got to have great faith. (laughs) Yes, yes. You just need to be obedient. You have to have a plan for your financial life, a budget. You need to prioritize your spending, to be able to do the things that God wants you to do in life. It will work for you if you'll work it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sister Brenda. Well, I think we pretty much covered um, on that last slide because you covered all the um, Haggai. 
everything. That last slide on that very last sentence, it says, when we refuse to honor God, we are choosing to work for manna. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 It's so, so important that we honor the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we're thankful for you and everyone that has joined in tonight. It is such a blessing to know that you don't have to be in this struggle class any longer. You don't have to be in a position of wandering in the wilderness any longer. If you have any questions, uh, please put those in the chat box. If you don't, and you think about questions at the conclusion of this broadcast, bring them to the next meeting next Tuesday at seven o'clock. But we're just so thankful and so grateful for the word of God tonight and the teaching tonight. Uh, this has been an awesome opportunity to simply share what God can do in each and every one of our lives when we make his agenda priority. And God's payment plan always works. And so I want to take a moment to thank all of those that made our first service in the new house of God at Love Fellowship Church, such a beautiful, beautiful, historic occasion. I thank God for all of you in your respective places. My heart has just been overjoyed and God was well pleased. I know he was. And we are so thankful. We cannot do what we do without you. And God looks to each and every one of us to be his hands and his feet in the kingdom of God. He looks to each and every one of us to be lights and witnesses to this lost and dying world. And so I encourage you, invite a friend, come out on this Sunday to the new house of God. Woohoo! hoo <laughs> <laughs> Fellowship Church, 5535 Statesville Road in the beautiful Queen City of Charlotte. I tell you, it's going to be a high time in the Lord. We're in a month of celebration leading up to our Founders Weekend, which is March 26th and March 27th, when we dedicate, officially dedicate the house of the Lord back to God. And so we want you to prepare your hearts and your minds to be a part of that occasion. God is truly doing great and mighty things, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So let us pray, and then we'll get, extend the invitation for salvation for those that uh, want to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for this awesome teaching. Lord, we thank you for just showing us the type of mindset that we don't need to have and the type of mindset that you want us to have. Lord God, we pray in the name of Jesus that the mindset of manna would cease in the life of every born again believer that's listening to this broadcast tonight, that the mindset of living in the struggling struggle class would cease in their lives. And Lord, that they would have a mindset of the promised land. They would have a mindset of prioritizing your kingdom agenda above their own personal agenda. We thank mm -hmm. you for it even thank now. Thank you, Lord. That, Lord, we're no longer in the wilderness, but we're going steadily and allowing you to reposition us for the promised land. Yes, Lord. Because the promised land yes. is greater than Egypt. The promised yes. land is yes. greater than our wilderness experience. Yes. And, Lord, we just thank you and we praise you for Sister Brenda being such a great co-facilitator with me on tonight. We thank you for every listener those that are tuning in all around the world. And Lord, we ask even now that you would show yourself strong and mighty in the lives of everyone that is listening under the sound of our voice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you're amen. listening today and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, we want to have this give you this opportunity to receive Jesus right now. Mm -hmm. Will you repeat this prayer after me? Dear God, I thank you 
for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for my sins. And I ask you now to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, to come into my heart, into my life, and be my Lord and my Savior. If you pray that simple prayer, the prayer of salvation, we want you to know that the love of God, the spirit of God has entered into your heart and you are saved, you are born again, you are a child of God. Go to our website at lfccharlotte.org, click on the contact tab, send us your information. We wanna get information back out to you. Our last appeal, we, we always wanna invite you to give, for the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. This is a part of the prioritizing that we need to do as children of God. So if you desire to give, there are multiple ways to give. Go to the website as well, and you'll see all the ways to give, your tithes, your offerings, gifts of love, to support the work that God is doing in the earth realm through Love Fellowship Church, the kingdom work that we're doing. And it is a great work, amen. And so we thank you for your generous giving, and we thank you for all that you do for God's kingdom. God bless you. We love you and have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday and week. Bye-bye. Good night.